check, check. There we go. Sorry. Just turned on the mic. Good thing I checked. Good thing I checked. Okay. How's everybody doing? How we doing? Good. YouTube, how you doing? Okay. So what we're going to do, I was motivated by a project to uh, put, to access noise within the shaders. Um, I thought that was a good idea. Enchant GPT has already given me some code to make that happen, which I'm pretty much already familiar with, so it's just a time saver not being too too intellectually lazy with this AI <laughs> doing everything for me. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go into the I haven't even opened the project. I just got off work a little bit ago. Got sent home a little bit early. I thought I was gonna work till seven, only worked till a little after five, because we had a little five o'clock rush and I was supposed to go home at five. But we're good. We are good. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Okay, what do we got here? I think I loaded the flowers. So if you look at the shaders that I've got in here, the configurations, I have a flowers configuration to work on the flowers and stuff, <laughs> which is cool. But we're going to be doing a new a new thing all together, so. Okay, so main station generator 15, let's save it to 16. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, let's see what we have to do here, so. GLM vector, I think we already have all that stuff. See GLM and vector, okay. Generate noise data, so. <clears throat> so it looks like this is a function. Generate noise data, let's just put the function right in. It looks like it works just fine. Let's double check here, down here. Generate OpenGL init code. That's cool. That was last. Generate noise data. Okay, so it takes a vector, noise data width star width times height. Okay, my brain's a little slow. I've been working, and as soon as I'm gonna get off work, my brain shuts down. So I'm kind of using it in the shutdown mode. <laughs> so y to height plus plus zero to width. X noise value equals GLM per line. Okay, great. Vector 2 GLM per line vector 2 X divided by width Y divided by height. Okay, so you can specify whatever width and height you want. Noise data Y times width plus X. Oh, so it's just a straight float there. Oh, a vector of floats. Oh, that's right. So when you specify this right here, and that's the noise data. Okay, normalize zero to one. Noise value plus one times 0.5. So that's zero to one. So if I divide by 0.5, multiplies by two, zero to two, and then I add one, Oh, so it's negative one to one? Oh, okay, all right. So this gives you a value negative one to one from the Perlin. Okay, I gotcha. I just reverse did that, okay. All right, I'm good with that one. With the noise data generated, you can create an OpenGL texture. I'll be right back. Okay, that's nothing. My neighbors are making some noise. Apologies. Okay, so with the noise data generated, you can create an OpenGL texture, and we haven't used textures yet in this code, so 
Here we go. Return texture ID. Okay, so let's give these I'm just going to do the function definitions up here. Vector float. Okay, we don't need that. So this is just the usual, the width and height goes in there, texture 2D, noise data gets sent in, that's it, that's all it is. I didn't realize you could do that with the, uh, with the vector, that's cool. Finally, pass the texture to your shaders and use it for rendering. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the noise texture is always going to be available. Um, I'm just thinking here. Generate noise data and create the texture in your rendering. Okay, so this is the initialization code right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it a little bit different. Pardon me. <clears throat> Bruno, let's go thousand twenty four. What was I doing? I don't know. I was looking for something. I don't know. Okay, so that's okay. I already did that. The rendering loop. Okay, so we'll do that. Hold on. Um, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I was gonna ask a question. Okay, so this code for the right framework, okay, and then I ask for... <laughs> Applying noise in the vertex shader can create interesting effects. Okay, so yeah.
What is it? It's a... I think that's how it works, right? Isn't that how I have the time? Hold on. Have I broken anything yet? Okay, it initialized, but it didn't use it yet. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and that works. So I have the time up here, right? I have the time in the vertex shader. I have it in the geometry shader. Okay. And then I have it down here in the fragment shader. And then if I go to, um, what's the other one? Test? Yeah. So time is not available in those. Okay, hold up. I don't think I have time available. Okay, conclusion. Okay. In OpenGL and GLSL textures are passed to shaders as uniforms. Oh, once you declare and bind textures as uniform, it becomes accessible in all shader stages that come out to the pipeline and provides you to declare in each shader where you want to use it which the user will be able to do because they're editing. Okay, great. However, the way textures are used can vary between different shader stages. Here's a brief overview of how you could implement the noise texture in each stage. First, you create and bind the texture as you would for any texture, right? Passing the texture to shaders. You pass the texture to shaders via uniform in your shader frame familiar uniform the texture in each shader. You want to use a vertex shader, sampler, fragment shader, sampler, and so on for tessellation and geometry shaders, <laughs> okay. You can sample the texture using the GLSL texture function. The way you use the texture will depend on what you're trying to achieve in that stage. Ensure, the, ensure you set the uniform for the noise texture in each shader program where it's used. Assuming you have a shader program linked and in use. U noise texture, okay. What does that say? Zero because what? <laughs> it has a comment there. Hold on, I want to read that. Bum, ba, bum. Because we use GL Texture Zero. Okay, gotcha. Performance using textures can be performance intensive. It's often more efficient to use them in fragment shaders. Consider whether it makes sense to use a noise texture in all stages for your application for using noise and vertex in all stages in 2D shaders. While it technically feasible to make the noise texture available in all sh shader stages, think about whether this adds in. Oh, Uniform Sampler 2D, right, 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 okay. All right, since it's still, try using the noise texture to manipulate vertex positions or other attributes. This could be used for effects like vertex displacement or creating a wavy surface. Here you might use the noise to dynamically alter the geomet geometry, such as modifying normals or creating new vertices based on the noise values. These are interesting for detailed surface manipulation using the noise texture to vary tessellation factors or to displace vertices in the tessellated geometry. Common uses include applying noise to surface due to the roughness, creating static or organic patterns. 
User interface provide a UI in your shader editor where users can easily enable or disable the use of the noise texture in each shader, shader stage. <clears throat> Okay, and one thing that just occurred to me too is I don't even have a default pass-through shader start, like a start not a do nothing shader. I don't have that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that. Well, let's work on this first, then we'll get to that. Okay, create noise texture. So down here. So we generate the noise data, we create the noise texture. Okay, let's go back up here. So generate noise data, create noise texture. In your rendering loop, active, te active texture, bind texture. Uniform location, okay. And it's one I, so what is that? One integer? Okay. So we do that before the draw call. See, set float the time. So we're basically going to go like this. So there it's bound, there's the bind texture. Wait, did I create the noise texture at this variable yet? I don't think I have that, do I have that? I think it's just supposed to be a... There we go. Shader program, so right here. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna go ss shader dot set. It's an integer. We're gonna set int. Let's just go the noise. <laughs> set it to zero. Okay, so that sets up the texture. Uh, oh wait, where am I at? I'm thinking it's in here. So the noise is what we're gonna call it. And then each texture or each shader that we wanna use it in. Okay. So wherever the user wants to use it, like the vertex shader, we can just go uniform, uh, sampler 2D, the noise, like that. And then if I update that, it doesn't break it.
This will be interesting. Did it stop generating? Do I have to scroll? Oh, why did it do that? I don't know. Okay, so, oh wow, look at all this. Okay, so we have that, we have that. <laughs> so here, vertex position equals vertices. Okay, so then, oh, I like this. Noise value equals texture, the noise, vertex position, x, y, times 0 0.5 plus 0.5, dot r. Dot r? Interesting. Okay, it's just using the first dot r. Oh, texture. So of the texture that it, of the texture, sorry, the color that it gets from the texture, which is actually a vector 4 RGBA, it's going to use just R. Apply noise to the vertex position. The effect can be adjusted by changing the multiplication factor. Vertex position Z plus noise value adjust Z based on noise. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's look at that. I don't know that I'm going to do that exactly, but let's let's see. So everything basically it's right from there to there. We're going to put that in there, and then we've got vertex position equals vertices GL vertex ID. Okay, noise value equals texture like that, and then we're just going to go vertex position dot. X. Let's change it to X. Okay, that does work. That's crazy. Okay, cool. Very cool. So all the user has to do is include this, and then you can sample from the texture. Whatever you can, whatever sample you can calculate. Okay, so we have noise now. That's awesome. Okay, so I'd say that's a little bit of an update, putting noise into the thing. Um, shoot, that was a little quick. That was quick, okay. Um, let's go ahead and update it. I'm just gonna make that a four or five update. I think the last one was four. We're gonna do four or five, so hold on. Shader Playground. Okay, so let's go like this. Okay, and then I do have another, I'll include the flowers if people want to play with that. Or right, I guess I don't have to unless I change the UP, USP groups, because that one just has those two. Let's just leave that, and then we'll update the tech, the, uh, and while I'm doing this, I might as well back up my run as administrator. That was nice, that was nice. Back up latest update build let's load both of those okay so we have to build the shader playground very nice again we're just going for functionality let's get it scanned and see if we can run it just from here okay v Let's load the test. This is the one. We don't have to test the same thing again, but we certainly could. So, let's see if I can remember this now. I don't. <laughs> Noise value equals this. But I have it saved in mine, so I don't need to worry. But And then this is just going to be... That's a vector three, okay. 
and then it's vector I changed the uh, X position and then the Y position you can actually do both in this one because the Z I don't think that'll do anything it won't visibly show any difference uh oh did I make an error we have an error uh, undefined variable the noise oh because I didn't include it as a uh, uniform There we go. Okay, so that's fine. So that works. Okay, so we did that. So how do we back this up now? Main project, date string, main space gems. I haven't even worked on main space gems. Shader code files. What's this one? Yeah. Ultimate Shader Playground. Okay, so what version are we on now? 16. We don't need that. Space Station Generator 2, oh, okay, Shader Ultimate. Actually, I think we're even up to uh, 2 and 6, so it's just this one. Rejoice. <laughs> okay, the Station Generator, that's the main one we want to save, and the Shader Ultimate 6. So we need to create the directory path up here. So date string equals that. Directory path equals that. Uh, date string new item directory path plus new item directory directory path. There. Oops. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, I gotta move. Don't do it. Don't do it, Jeff. It's a trap. <laughs> there we go. We will soon have the F drive. Yes. Okay, so I think it was able to do the other one, but not the last one. Directory path plus OpenGL. No. I think... I think these both failed, right? Okay. So then all we want to do is this. Why do we have two open GLs? <laughs> Within each other, because I think I did it twice, but it's 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 okay. We didn't have it plugged in on that. We got it saved as the main thing, and we're good. Okay, so now we can update itch. So close that down. Save that. Save everything. Okay, we're ready to update the demo build. All oh, we're gonna do shader playground. That's that's it. So we're going to go here. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so send to compress zipped folder, shader playground. Uh, why is it two? I don't want the two. Computer, this. What is going on? Ah, Windows, I do not like that. Do not like it, Sam, I am. So there we go, shader playground, all right, it's updated now. Okay, and then we'll do a, a quick game dev log dashboard uh, edit. We're gonna go four five. Delete this file. Okay. Upload. Downloads. 
There we go. Okay. Four, five. Ah. Noise texture sampler 2D now included. Oh, we better say. Um, just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, let's see. So let's highlight this here. I wish there was underlining and the noise accesses the noise texture. Bold. There we go. Save. Okay. Devlog. Okay. New devlog. There we go. Actually, let's just go like it's uniform <laughs> float the time. And then, or should I? There we go. That's that should be okay. Uniform <laughs> sampler 2D the noise. There we go. Okay, so that works. What do we got here? Okay, nobody's watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>